Hey guys, so uh, I want to talk about something that happens to uh, college professors and just kind of experts in particular fields in general, but I'm kind of going at it from the college uh, professor angle because that's the one I see the most. So for history instructors, professors, uh, science instructors, professors, there will always be students who will come into the classroom with uh, basically not knowing what they're talking about. So if you're a biology professor, there is a chance that you're going to have a student who tells you when you get into the whole evolution of life that um, they're going to push back against. They're going to be like, well, they're going to tell you, uh, you know, even though you've spent years and you're studying something that you don't know anything about this, that evolution is either completely false or that uh, the scientists have messed it up because of fossils missing in the record, something like that. If you're a history professor, good luck with that. I mean, there it's it's a landmine. A landmine. You talk about anything in American history before today, <laughs> you're gonna get you know. Uh, don't talk the Civil War, the Spanish American War, the Mexican American War. You're gonna have people who are going to be arguing with you or something, you know. And the great thing about math is people don't really argue with you about how to. Um, to do, you know, I don't know how to find the, you know, the slope of a line. The closest thing I've ever had to that was when I would, uh, when I have a class where we're doing conversions and we have this method called the, uh, there's different names for it, but the train track method of conversion. And there'll be students who are like, well, I'm going to do it my way. And I'm like, all right, Frank Sinatra, you do it your way. And then sure enough, you know, they take the test and they realize their way doesn't work out. So they're not saying that the way I'm showing is wrong. They're just saying that their way, they can do it better. And My attitude has always been, look, if you can show your work and explain it, do whichever way you want to. But I discovered for the first time, there actually is someone who pushes back against basic mathematical knowledge, much like the way people will dispute evolution uh, or history or whatever. And that's Terrence Howard. <laughs> And if you guys aren't familiar, you know, Terrence Howard, I'm talking about the actor. Uh, so first of all, Terrence Howard, I don't want to badmouth the guy too much, but he he already kind of shows signs of being a little out there. You guys may know him from being in the, the Iron Man movie. So this is a quick story about that. He got paid anywhere between three and a half and four and a half million to play uh, uh, Rudy Rhodes, I think it's or, you know, I think it's James Rhodes, but anyway, in, in Iron Man. And Robert Downey Jr. only got paid 500000 for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, he got paid uh, maybe as much as nine times as much as Robert Downey Jr. But then when the next movie came around, they were trying to drop his pay, and he was like, no, I should get paid as much as Robert Downey Jr. And he left, so they brought in Don Cheadle. They're like, well, we get another black dude, and we're not even going to try to get a dude who looks like you. We gonna get the the darkest brother in the world. So, so, so how do you like it? How do you like that? But going back, why am I bringing up Terrence Howard? Well, Terrence Howard, he came up with this. Uh, he believes that he's discovered that one times one is two, and he says that in the future, no students will be taught. I'm not making this up. He said in the future, no students will be taught that one times one is one. And he says that in order to come to this conclusion, you have to use a special system of logic called Terence, I think it's Terenceology or something like that. I'm going to put the name of it on there. Um, and I really think he believes this. I really think he believes this. So I've never seen that before where someone, you know, it could be like, there's been critics of math within the world of math. I mean, uh, Lewis Carroll, real name Charles Dodson, was critical of uh of, of mathematics and uh, and things that were being discovered in math at the time. He was, by the way, he was a mathematician guy who wrote Alice in, the Alice in Wonderland books, the idea of infinities, and I think even uh, modern algebra. He was critical of it. And, this, and there were a lot of people who thought that when you're getting into the infinitesimal math that was being, uh, being I guess I could say, discovered at the time, they were very critical of saying it doesn't make, it, it, it's not rational, no pun intended. So that's, you know, okay. And then, you know, and even uh, Gödel's incompleteness theorem is is something of math. You could say Bertrand Russell's, you know, where he's going to prove, uh, you know, one plus one is two is just may, maybe he's making a statement with that. But this is just uh, straight up bizarre. And I don't know either. Terrence Howard is, of course, I mean, he's either a, 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 mis, a misguided genius or he's a madman. But either way, it's it's fascinating.